Valley Talk on News Talk 1580 KGAL. And welcome to Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. It is a Monday. Glad to have you with us today. It is the 14th of January. I hope your uh, 2013 is going well. Very last story that Mark had, very appropriate on the newscast, because in the studio today we have Rod Sal of Build Lebanon Trails. We didn't choreograph this. It just kind of happened. So we're going to be uh, talking about that, the major 2013 project, what Build Lebanon Trails is. And they've also recently completed uh, a major goal in the organization, that is their 501c3 status. It's going to allow them to uh, fundraise more. Rod, thank you for being with us on Valley Talk. You're welcome, Dave. More about BLT, Build Lemon and Trails, in just a moment. Do want to remind you that uh, Quiznos is a, sport, a partner of KGAL on Valley Talk, and we are asking you to submit your entry because at the end of the show, we're going to be giving away a $10 gift certificate for Quiznos Taste on Us. You can take that into the store, the Albany Quiznos only, next to Novak's Restaurant and next to the former G.I. Joe Sporting Goods location. You can, if you win, have your choice of sub-sandwiches, chips, drinks, whatever. Take a buddy in there. Have taste on us. Have lunch on us. So you need to submit your entry to Dave at KGAL.com. Put taste on us on the subject line or call the station at 926-KGAL or 451-KGAL for the Quiznos Taste on Us. A couple of other housekeeping measures we need to tell you about. Uh, here shortly, uh, the governor is going to be having his state of the state message as the legislature is getting underway today. Uh, we're going to be having some um, reaction for that on tomorrow's Valley Talk. Also tomorrow, we're going to have H&R Block in the studio once again talking about tax issues and our average investment guy, John Gibson. So tomorrow, we're going to talk about state budget, give reaction to the governor's state of the state message today, what um, the... Thinking is going forward in this legislative session what some of the priorities are, what some of the lawmakers want to see, and we'll be having that on tomorrow's show. So that's what the lineup is for the next two days here on Valley Talk. Today, we're going to be talking about Build Lebanon Trails. Rod Sell in the studio, and again, Rod, turn off my phone here, and uh, we are glad to have you with us today. Let's talk about, first of all, uh, what you were mentioning just on the last news story that uh, KGAL had before our show, major project in two thir- 2013, what is it? Oh, that, uh, the, the project for 2013 just came to light recently when a, uh, a property owner who we've been talking to for the last few years came forward and uh, volunteered to, uh, to offer a trail easement uh, along, a, along the Le- Albany and Lebanon Canal uh, just south of the hospital, Lebanon Hospital. And um, also he offered to uh, put a bridge across the canal for us. So uh, we're just in the very first planning stages of that. Um, we're going to be drawing up the, uh, the designs and uh, moving forward with that. But that is the key um, missing link in a trail system that uh, most of it's existing across the entire north of Lebanon from east to west uh, city limits. But this one missing piece, when it goes together, it'll, it'll be a 17,000 foot long trail that will go all the way across town. It's significant in that it ties the whole community together along the north side and goes through the medical campus and the hospital and goes all the way to the uh, South San Am River. Why is it so important to have so many trails in Lebanon? Well, I think it's important in any community, not, uh, not necessarily Lebanon. Uh, trails make a community uh, livable, and uh, we all know that uh, you know there's a crisis right now with uh, uh, adult and also childhood obesity, and uh, the, what the trails provide is... Uh, free, close to home, outdoor recreation right outside everybody's front door. And that's been one of the goals all along is for us to be able to establish a, a place that people can can recreate outside for free. One of the things, and people that have listened to this show have heard me uh, talk about it several times. I'm going to talk about it again. Uh, went to New Zealand and they are very outdoors people. They walk a lot. Beautiful country. They get out. They don't. Their serving portions are smaller than they are here in America. But they get off the couch, and they get out, and they visit, and they, they do a lot of hiking. As you take a look, and one of the things that struck me as I got off the airport in Los Angeles, I lived over there for nine months, came back to the United States. And the first thing that hit me in the face as I got off the airport at Los Angeles and looked at the people, I thought, my gosh. Yeah. What happened to these people? Did was there a radiation thing, or these people are huge? Yeah. And first thing they hit me in the face, and I didn't really grasp just how big the obesity issue is until that moment, and then it just really slapped me in the face. We, it, it does. We, we need to get 
off the couch and onto the trails. And uh, one of the uh, good friend of mine once said that Americans are killing themselves with their knife and their fork. You know, there's a lot of expenses that come to that that uh, that cost us all money. That uh, healthcare expense is getting pretty high, and, and a lot of that comes out of our pockets. So if we can do anything to, to to have people so they don't have to go to the doctor as much, that saves us all too. So it, there's an economic piece to this also. Another uh, goal that you had, which you completed here recently in uh, the last year, was to get your nonprofit 501c3 status. I understand here in the last couple of months that's happened. It has in the last couple of months. It, uh, we've got uh, great committee members, and uh, that that helped us uh, move through the federal process to be able to fu to gain our 501c3 status, and that's really opened up a lot of doors for us. Uh, for one, we now we created uh, two different groups. There's a board of directors, Bill Levin Trails board of directors, and now we have the Levin and Trails committee. And the Levin and Trails committee meets on the on the first Tuesday of every month at the hospital from uh, 7 to 8:30 p.m. And everyone that shows up at that meeting has a has a full voting say of everything that happens. So it really is a community-based group. If you show up and want to be involved, that's a wonderful opportunity to do it. How many trails exist so far as far as how many miles of trails do you have? I'm looking at a map here. You may have the same map at home. Build the Lebanon Trails map. It's the handout that they give. And there's the Marks Lewis Trails, the Reeves Parkway, Burkhart Creek Trail. Are these completed trails? The trails on the map you have uh, yes. are completed trails. That's a new map. In fact, that's just uh, was created last week, finished last week, and we're just starting to distri uh, distribute that map. So what's uh, and that's available at the Lebanon Chamber office too. It's, it's a brochure with a map on it, and uh, so we have 26,000 feet now, a little over that, and uh, we're. This next year, we uh, already have funded two, two new trails at Cheetah Lake. Uh, there's four peninsulas out there, and we're building uh, trails on two of those four peninsulas. One already exists, and that's going to increase our footage considerably. So as I look at the map, the green, the green trails are already completed, and the yellow are the proposed. That's right, yeah. So and, and there's a lot more that are proposed, but those are our two active ones that we know are going to happen right away, the two yellow ones that you see on there. Community support. How long has Build BLT, Build Lebanon Trails, been in existence? We actually created the committee in 2005. In 2003, the Samaritan uh, Lebanon Hospital had a program they started called CHIPS, the Community Health Improvement Partnership. And uh, that group wanted to be able to improve the overall health in East Lynn County. They created coalitions to be able to do that, and Build Lebanon Trails was one of those boxes that they created to be able to, to uh, help with that uh, uh, with the overall health issues of the community. So in 2005, we started the committee, and we've been holding monthly events, free monthly events ever since. We're well over 90 now. We do one on the second Saturday of every month, and those are always free. And that all the, we have a the list for 2003 of events, the scheduled events, is available on our webpage and on Facebook. Why are you so involved in this? Well, I've got a passion for uh, being outside, and uh, I just I love the outdoors. And the idea of being able to have a, a system where I can do that um, right outside my front door is, is very intriguing to me. And, and I realized several years ago when I, when I looked at maps of Lebanon that the greenways in Lebanon, they are, there's, there's areas that haven't been developed and, uh, and they needed to be preserved. Uh, and one of the ways to do that is to make them a, a public area and then give public access to those. So when we go out on the trail systems, we see all kinds of wildlife. And this is an urban setting, so that's what's so special about it. Um, and Cheetah Lake is on the south end of town, and that's a, over a 200-acre site that has uh, um, bunches of trails that we're, that we're building and that are built uh, that access all of those, all those wonders. When that is completely, the Cheetah Lake facility is going to be a beautiful facility. It already is. It is. The Lebanon Community Foundation is developing the, the uh, park on the, on the south end. Uh, the, the American Youth Soccer Association just put soccer fields on uh, on the south end uh, within the last year. And uh, now we're trying to develop the trails uh, through all of those areas. And eventually they're all going to be interconnected and you're going to have several loops that you can that you can do and and the main stay there is going to be uh, 12 foot wide paved trails so that they're fully ada accessible so so everyone regardless of uh, their physical limitations are going to be able to uh, to use that trail system what's your biggest challenges for blt build limited trails as you get out there you've been going since 2005 you have a, a major vision to entrail the community um what's your challenge 
You know, the biggest challenge with building a trail, uh, well, there, there's two, but I would say the biggest is is getting uh, the property itself. And uh, we've always, uh, Build 11 Trails, is, uh, their goal is to do at least one trail segment a year, and there's 63 trail segments in the Lebanon Trails plan. And we've been able to do more than that. But our biggest challenge is to get that piece of property the right away to be able to build that trail. And that can be at a trail easement where we don't have ownership, or it can be ownership. And I say we, when I say we, I mean the city of Lebanon. We're working with the city of Lebanon uh, and building these trails uh, for them. They'll have the ownership. So the And the other one is funding. Um, so with our 501c3 status, it really opens up another window for us to be able to go out to private corporations and private foundations to be able to seek funding. Um, we also write grants that are uh, through like the Oregon Parks and Recreation Department grants and for the city and give them to the city and the city submits those grants. Common denominator I'm hearing here is give to the city. So when all of the trails are done, are you handing them over to the city parks department? Is Build Lebanon Trails going to be an ongoing institution after you get all of your proposed trails done? You know, we've had several discussions about that. Uh, uh, to start with, we thought it would there would be a, a, a time frame when when we would get the trails developed and and then the, and the city would be taking care of them. But the city needs help in maintenance, and there's cost to that. So what we where we see it happening and where we've really been moving into is is uh, not only raising funds to build trails, but then maintaining those trails. We have at least two work days, official work days, that are scheduled per year on the trails, and then our our uh, the Lebanon Trails Committee people and, and volunteers work every day on on, on trail sections, picking up litter and, and cutting brush back. And so we're, we're really are trying to establish it. So we're, we're ongoing helping with the maintenance of those trails. So the vision is to continue to be very much on the ground, so to speak, to continue to not just build them and hand them over to the city, but you're going to continue to be actively involved in maintaining the trails ongoing into the future. That's Yeah, that's the current vision, and, and we don't know how that's going to look. Uh, obviously, when we get the trails built, when the when the trails plan is completed, then there's going to be other, other work that needs to happen in maintaining those trails, and um, we have a wonderful volunteer following. Uh, over 500 volunteers now like to come and help us at, at different times, so uh, we see that as continuing. I don't think the, the desire of the community to help is going to go away. And uh, so we'll help organize that effort. You mentioned 500 volunteers are involved. What's their biggest motivation? Is it health? Do they want to increase the livability of the community? I know those kind of go in partnership. You know, it's all of the above. Um, we have people that, that uh, feel really bond and, and a desire to, to have ownership of the trail systems and of their community. And, um, and you know, we, we talk about different organizations that get the youth involved, and, and that helps overall with that ownership, too. When the youth get involved um, and actually get their hands dirty on the trail, then they want to stick around and continue to be part of that. Speaking of the youth, getting them actively involved, engaged in the project, uh, you talk about obesity. One of the challenges that the health community do, I know there's been a lot of dialogue as far as health care reform. What do we need to do to lower the cost of health care? One of the things is to be healthier. Obviously, more exercise hand, goes hand in glove with getting out and working on the trails. One of the challenges we have with the youth today is unplugging them from the video games and getting them outdoors, getting them on trails. And uh, it would seem to me to be a very good idea to get them involved in trail projects. So when you do, what's been your experience? Well, they keep coming back. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple of youth groups that, that have been helping us now for several years, and they actually contact us and say, hey, don't forget about us. We want to be involved. When you have, a, have a, an event, uh, please contact us. So, And I would encourage anybody else that wants to be more involved, even if it's just a, a one day, a couple of hours, uh, let us know and uh, join us, and uh, it, we really have fun. And that's probably that key is is to when we get people out and they they leave smiling, uh, then I think then the hook is set, and and that they'll continue that uh, on their own. But we build them and trails. What we provide is we provide a a, a scheduled event. We organize them, and and we we pr make it easy for people to get involved. How often do you have the scheduled events? Every month. We have one every month, the second Saturday of every month. It isn't always a hike or a walk. usually is, but we have two work days that are scheduled in there. Last Saturday's uh, Recreational Trails Workshop that brought together 15 speakers from all over the Lama Valley was one of our events. Uh, so, uh, And other than those scheduled events, we have other events that, that arise uh, when we have special projects. And this 
February 9th uh, is an example of one of our work days that we're having on on our high priority project, uh, which is that trail we talked about. Uh, we call it Mark's Blue Trail Phase 4, uh, but it's actually that missing link couplet that, that goes across the entire um, north part of Lebanon. Primarily, this section that doesn't exist starts at Lebanon Community Hospital and goes east towards the San Am River. Now, we ha I'm looking at two maps here, Build Lebanon Trails. You have a map that's uh, dashed in red, proposed trails, and then you have another one that's uh, more of the completed green. So if, if somebody stops by the Lebanon Chamber Office, for example, and picks up these maps, what's the difference between the two maps? Well, one of the maps has uh, the 50 miles with the proposed trails and the... That's the one with the, that red hash marks. Yeah, and the current... Uh, existing trails. The updated one uh, that we have that's actually a fourfold flyer that has information on Build 11 trails on one side and the map on the back, uh, that has the trails that you can actually go out on now. If you're looking for a trail to, to uh, go out and walk, then that's the map you want. We tried to make it easier to find the other. With 50 miles, it's a uh, small, uh, you know, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. It's hard to de determine where the trails are, and we made that easier with our new trails map. This is KGAL's Valley Talk, and we have with us on the show today, and on the uh, Valley Talk, Rod Sell, Build Lebanon Trails, and we will continue with uh, more dialogue on the program this morning. Don't forget, tomorrow is tax time. Once again, H&R Block is going to be in the studio. We're going to be talking about the, um, the, the taxes and changing tax uh, laws and protocols and and the uh, proposals have been in the news a lot lately. Um, what's going on with 2012 as you file your taxes is there's been a lot of rhetoric, a lot of um, indecision by Congress on what to do. Uh, H&R Block's going to be in the studio tomorrow and uh, kind of clear that up for us a little bit. Also, we're going to be talking and getting a reaction from the governor's state of the state message. That should be happening right about now. And we'll get some reaction tomorrow. And, of course, John Gibson, our average investment guy, will be on the Val in the Valley Talk studios tomorrow. Don't forget to sign up for Quiznos Taste on Us. Send me an email, davidkgal.com. Put Quiznos Taste on Us on the subject line. And with that, we'll be back in just a moment with more of Build Lebanon Trails on Valley Talk. Start the new year off right in downtown Albany. Clothing, fine jewelry, do-it-yourself craft stores, furniture, toys, gifts, salons, event venues, live theater, movies, and 23 restaurants. More choices than you'd ever find at any local mall. Find it all in historic downtown Albany. Grab a cup of coffee, learn a new craft, do a little shopping, pamper yourself at one of the many salons, and then enjoy a scrumptious meal. Bring your family or meet new friends. Great entertainment, delicious dining, and unique shopping. It's all happening in historic downtown Albany. Panic is not a successful investment strategy, but unfortunately, it's often the response of investors when the markets catch them off guard. Hi, I'm Doug Phillips, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor here in Lebanon. Let's work together to prepare for the market's unpredictable ups and downs. We'll focus on a long-term, disciplined approach to investing instead of overreacting to the daily headlines. Stop by my office at 2600 South Main Road in Lebanon or call 541-451-4000 to make a face-to-face -face appointment. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. ServeCo is proud to announce that we now distribute a septic safe drain cleaner called BioClean. BioClean is a totally green product that eats through buildup in pipes and drains, leaving only an ash-like flushable substance that consumes itself. If you want to have pipes and drains that are trouble-free, then BioClean is the product for you. Want to know more? Contact ServeCo today for your licensed, bonded, and certified plumbing professionals at 1200 East Grant Street in Lebanon. Call 541-451-5090 or visit ServeCoInc.net. ServeCo, we're ready to serve you. Now open Saturday. Organizing volunteers to paint Mighty Oaks Children's Therapy Center. Providing funding for the mentoring of children at the Y. Sponsoring the Summer Jubilee Back to School event in Lebanon. This is Charlie Eads, owner and general manager of KGAL and K-Show Radio. We support the United Way because they are making a difference right here where we live and work. Please join me in supporting the United Way of Lynn County. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live. United. Hey, could you give me a hand with this crossword puzzle? I can't seem to get this one last clue. It says, with 30 years of radiator service experience. Sure, that's an easy one. Wacoma Auto Repair, of course. Who? Wacoma Auto Repair, a TechNet professional auto service in Benton County's only complete radiator shop, providing repairs on all autos, trucks, and even tractors. Call 541-754-2812. Wacoma Auto Center in Corvallis on Cornell, just off 9th Street, down from Goodwill, or visit wacomaauto.com. 
Deep clean, squeaky clean, that's what you want for your home and business. TM Janitors has been providing just that for years throughout the Mid-Valley. Glowing reports from Paloma, North Albany, Corvallis, Lebanon. Happy, satisfied clients. Great value, too. A fraction of the price of the national franchises. Get a quote from TM Janitors today. Mention this ad and get $50 off your initial deep cleaning. Call now, TM Janitors, 570-9711. Make a note, TM Janitors, 570-9711. Need a home? Then listen to Real Estate Talk with Dave Pouch, Saturday mornings on Smart Talk 1580. This is Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. Ron Sell with us on Build or Lebanon Trails, and glad to have you with us today, Ron. Great. Welcome. You have another event coming up. It's a 5K Fun Run and Walk at Cheetah Lake. Tell me about that. It's the fourth annual event. Our, our um, fourth annual Tree Lake 5K Fun Run and Walk is on uh, May 4th this year. It's a uh, Saturday, 2013. It's always on the first uh, weekend in May, the first Saturday. And uh, that's been a very good uh, event for us. And we actually are opening up registration for that uh, this week. Um, and we've designed it uh, a couple of new elements this year. One is we actually have a, a group um, registration. So if you have a group of over 15, uh, we're, we're taking five dollars or twenty five percent less off of that per person, and uh, as always, we have the the family. So the idea is to get the families involved, and and uh, for thirty five dollars, you're able to to bring in the family. Everybody that's under one household can come for that one price and uh, and show up, and we'll have a good run for you. The other exciting thing about this year is we've added a one a one mile uh, children's adventure run, and that's going to be a, a pretty easy uh, obstacle course. Um, and that we're just currently developing. And it'll all be within sight of the uh, start-finish line. So if you're a parent that, uh, that wants to participate in the 5K event uh, with or without the child, um, you're able to do that prior to the, the 5K. We have the, the one-mile children's run, and you can run through with them, and then they can join you or not on the, on the 5K. It, do, are you going to have some kind of supervision there where if the parents decide they want to do the longer run, they can turn their kids loose on the adventure trail, or is that something you want to avoid? Well, the adventure run happens prior to. Before. So okay. um, the, uh, they're, they're, they're not in conflict of, of each other. One with the children's run will be done, and then we'll start the, the, uh, the adult uh, run at, um, at 9.30. Do they need to make some kind of provision for the kids after the children's adventure run, like grandparents come pick them up so they can go on the adventure run if they're small enough they don't want to take them on the, the, the big people run? Yeah, that's a good point. Yep, that's uh, they. They do have to. We don't have any child care there uh, that day of the event. Being our first time, that's one of the things we'll probably look at for next year. All right, this is the fourth annual event for the uh, Fun Run and Walk 5K. What's been the uh, participation by the community in the past? Uh, last year we had over 300. This year we're prepping for 400. Um, so a really good turnout. Uh, and I, the one thing I wanted to stress about this, this is our, our one major fundraiser of the year. And 100% of, of the proceeds, if we have no paid staff, so 100% of all the funds that Build Lemon Trails takes in goes towards promotion, maintenance, and development of the proposed 50-plus uh, mile trail system in Lebanon. What's the cost of, to get involved in the 5K Fun Run Walk? It's uh, $20. Uh, for registration and t-shirts if you we have high-tech t-shirts this year that are 15 so it's in, in addition of, of the 20 not mandatory if you want one as it'll be in the registration you'll be able to choose that how do they register can they go to the chamber beforehand do they need to register day of the event you'll be able to get the registration information online at build and trails.com also eclectic racing uh is uh is organizing the event for us and uh they'll they they uh they go through uh, getmeregister.com. So within the next two weeks, we'll have all that information online, and, and it really is pretty easy to get registered. And um, most people that, that do events just do a search for local uh, local running events, and our event will be there. So got an email here just a minute ago. As far as there's a little bit of confusion, how many miles currently exist of trails today? Well, let's do the quick math here. 26,000 feet, so it's, uh, uh, and there's uh, over 5,000 feet to a mile, so that's uh, about a little over five miles. About five miles today. The plan is to build 50 total. 
True, and the the full trail uh, development also includes some interconnecting with existing sidewalks. So if you want to go from one trail system to another trail system, then it'll be a sidewalk. And the difference between a trail and a, and a, a sidewalk connection is the sidewalks primarily are 5 feet. Urban trail systems are developed to be 10 or 12 foot wide, so you eliminate some of the conflicts you have with the multiple users on the trail. We were talking during the break about the handshaking between the Samaritan Health of the campus. It would seem to me that this would be a very great partnership that could be developed because um, they're obviously going to be um, wanting people in the community to be lead a healthier lifestyle. We mentioned that's one of the challenges as we're looking at going forward with health care, decreasing the cost, getting people more healthy so they don't get as sick. So obviously it would seem like they would want to have some uh, a good deal of handshaking with BLT. They do, and then, in fact, they've been a resource for us in the in the past. And uh, we always like to have the students, uh, medical students, involved on our on our committees. They they make that special connection uh, that uh, um, with all of the students, and then they I know that they participate in, in uh, large large amounts in our events as runners, and we hear from them often on how important that trail system is to them. Uh, they have very busy schedules, and when they want to go out and, and exercise, they want to do it from wherever they are and be able to get it done uh, on, on the trails, and the trails, being able to run the trails fits that uh, criteria for them really well. If there is a nonprofit organization, maybe a church group or some kind of club or maybe it's just a bunch of neighbors that are listening this morning on the radio and they say you know we've got an idea for build lemon and trails maybe they want to add uh, a spur from the trail system maybe they just want to come out there and help you clean brush maybe they just want to get involved what opportunities are there for them we'd love to talk to them um there's there's uh, opportunities that more than what are advertised in our in our events um, we often have uh, work days that uh, on trail projects that we that we have ongoing that come up uh, during the year. So uh, all they have to do is get a hold of uh, get a hold of me, or uh, they can do that through our Facebook or our web page, and send a, send us an email, and, and we'll respond and give you more information on how to get more involved. What's your annual budget roundabout? That's a tough one. Uh, the um, don't recall right away. We just we this is our first full budget because now we have a board of directors so we created our first full budget and um and a lot of most of our funds come in and go out uh, and i think i'm i'm guessing around twenty thousand this year including the 5k and the, and the funds that it, it raises and um and uh money that we're putting out uh for the trail system the two trails gravel trails we're going to be building out at cheetah lake this year um, that's a major expense for us, so that's where a lot of those expenditures are going to be. Let's talk about expenses. You talk about the Cheetah Lake courses. Typically, and I know it's going to change depending on the trail you're working on, but what's your biggest expense generally in putting in a trail? Is the gravel, labor, what? Well, I was going to say land, but uh, we've been doing really, really good at uh, getting donations for land and trail easements, which don't really cost anything. So, um, and uh, the most expensive thing that we see is is asphalt uh, or hard surface concrete or asphalt. So, uh, a lot of times we'll take them and we'll take a trail project in pieces, and we'll get the uh, we'll build it the uh, the gravel trail to the specifications that are needed for hard surface later. So when we do get the extra funding to pave them, we can pave them. So everything is built with a, a really rigid standard, a sustainable standard that's going to last for a long, long time. Do you have any in-kind uh, contributions? Maybe somebody's with a construction company and they, they hear what you're doing and want to get involved. Uh, any opportunities for that? Here we do have. And uh, we, we've been really fortunate with that in the past to have several private contractors come forward who want to be able to donate either a, a, a day or a longer than a day to help us develop trails. We had trails that have been roughed in uh, by uh, private companies, and we also have a um, actually, John Dingus Landscaping comes at, and comes out to our work days, brings his equipment, and and he's got some wonderful equipment and skills, and and uh, takes away a lot of the hard physical labor for us. You also do some landscaping on some of the trails, trees, planting, that kind of thing. We do riparian restoration and uh, non-native uh, plant removal, um, and and trimming if the if there's trimming that needs to be done. Uh, a lot of times you'll see somebody out on the trail just walking along, and they'll have a plastic bag to pick up trash, and they'll have trimmers, and they'll they'll, they'll be clipping out the the, uh, the small brush that gets in the way of of the trail. 
What about um, partnering with, for example, uh, ODF and W, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife? You mentioned riparian habitat, especially in the Cheetah Lake area where you got some waterways there. Any opportunities for grants or working with the state um, to help improve riparian habitat and also help build your trail at the same time? You know, I'm glad you asked that because um, there's two grant applications that are out right now. Uh, one is the Recreational Trails Grant Program, and that's to help develop the, the paved the, the trails at, at Cheetah Lake. But along with that, uh, we've applied to the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife because it, at Cheetah Lake on the north parking lot, the, uh, they've uh, ODF and W's helped fund um, a boat ramp and uh, and, a, and a boarding dock. And those were the uh, Albany chapter of the Association of Northwest Steelheaders provided the labor force for that. And uh, now we're going back to say, okay, well, we'd like to connect with that ADA fishing platform that, that they funded prior that was built by the uh, Albany chapter of the Association of Northwest Steelheaders. And uh, so we've applied for a grant to provide a hard surface trail from the parking lot and includes a, a, a van ADA accessible parking spot and hard surface to the ADA fishing platform. And we'll hear about that that in the next couple of months. Rod Sellers with Build Lemon and Trails. This is Valley Tuck. Don't forget to sign up for the uh, Quiznos Taste on Us. At the end of the show, we're going to be giving away a $10 gift certificate. Good for your choice of anything at the store. Uh, sub sandwiches, chips, drinks. Take a buddy down there and have lunch on us. But the first thing you have to do is sign up. And you can do that by sending me an email at davidkgal.com or calling the station at 451-KGAL or 926-KGAL. Quiznos, taste on us. Thanks to Dale and the crew for being a part of the Valley Talk family here on KGAL. I'm Dave Adams. We're with Rod Sell, Build Lebanon Trails, and the program will continue in just a moment. The Osgood File, sponsored in part by Sage, turning numbers into knowledge that your business can use. Make your business smarter and your life easier with services from Sage. This is Charles Osgood. If you were to visit the workshop of Afghan designers Masood and Mahmoud Hassani, you would see big balls and cylinders of bamboo and plastic that roll along the ground like tumbleweed. You might think this must be some kind of modern art installation. In a way, you'd be right, because they will go on display at the Museum of Modern Art in New York in March. But they're much more than that. Each one, costing about $40, is a wind-propelled, man-made, 150-pound rolling mine detonator. The story after this. Most people who run a small business will tell you that there are limits to what any one person can get done in a single day. After all that buying, selling, handshaking, even the best multitaskers start to feel overwhelmed at times. But remember, you're not alone. The UPS store in your neighborhood is ready to help. With professional printing services like brochures, flyers, and business cards, your hard work will be represented the way you intended. Their mailbox solutions save time and make life easier. With a real street address, email or text notifications when mail and packages arrive, and package acceptance from any carrier. Also, their custom packing and shipping solutions give you confidence that your shipment's been packed with the know-how of a certified packing expert. With all these great services in one convenient location, you'll find that multitasking is as easy as visiting your local UPS store. And don't forget their open Martin Luther King Jr. Day for all your printing and shipping needs. Find a location near you. Visit the upsstore.com. The UPS Store franchise locations are independently owned and operated. Services, pricing, and hours of operation may vary by location. See Center for details. It's estimated that there are 110 million anti-personnel mines buried in the ground around the world. These kill and make people every day, including civilians, often years after they've been put in place. The Hassani creations, which they call mine kafan, are a way of getting rid of these mines by rolling up to them and setting them off. The mine kafans look sort of like big, big cartoon mines with long bamboo sticks sticking out from the center in every direction each with a plastic foot that the kafan rolls on and then catches the wind, as Masood Hassani explains. Every foot has a circular form of frisbee. So it's kind of uh, catching the wind from inside. Uh, 170 feet of the aerodynamic shapes that they are catching the wind. So that's why it's very easy moving. Some critics, including the Dutch military, have said it's too easy moving and a random wind gust might blow it off course. Well, that was a problem, says Hassani, but now... Every microphone has a GPS chip inside it. Because it's wind-powered, you don't know where it is going. Wind-powered, man-steered from anywhere, he says, and cheap. After any explosion, the core stays intact, and you can reuse it again. All the information and data stays inside it. So it's a kind of black box. Drifting along with a tumbling tumbleweed. The Osgood File. Charles Osgood on the CBS Radio Network. 
going out to lunch at a nice restaurant can be expensive, and the big portions put you more in the mood for a nap than a productive afternoon. Mama's fine Italian to the rescue. The small appetite senior menu is just right. Anyone and everyone is invited to order from the Light Appetites menu for lunch from 11 to 4 p.m. with tasty entrees beginning at only $3.95. Why go hungry or go anywhere else for lunch? Eat healthy, eat light at Mama's. Close Sunday and Monday, so make the most of Tuesday through Friday and join your friends at Mama's for lunch. Dinner only on Saturday. Mama's features charbroiled steaks every day. Make reservations for dinner or pick up a bottle of fine wine. Seating is limited, so please call for reservations. 541-451-5050. That's 451-5050. Mama's Fine Italian and Wine Shop. On West Oak, between Main and 2nd in Lebanon. Across from the Big Blue Napa Auto Parts Building. This is Chris Latimer from the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Greater Santa Am. I'd like to thank you for supporting the club in 2012 by investing with us in services to Eastland County kids. I'd also like to invite you to our Founders Celebration on January 26th when we'll recognize the visionaries of the past, true champions of children in Eastland County, and formally celebrate the 20th anniversary of the 5th Street Clubhouse. Please call 541-258-7105 for details or visit bgcgreatersaniam.org. I hope to see you there. Less hype, just quality news, sports, and smart talk. From your friends at 1580 KGAL. This is Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. Rod Sell with us with Build Lebanon Trails. If you have a comment, we'd like to have you email it to us, Dave at KGAL.com. And don't forget to sign up for Quiznos Taste on Us. We'll be talking here for another 17, 18 minutes about BLT. Don't forget tomorrow on the show, once again, H&R Block will be here in the studios. We're going to have a licensed or an enrolled tax agent here. Going to be talking about... Uh, one of the things we're going to be talking about tomorrow is the health plan and how that fits into your tax picture. So we'll be listening for that. Also, if you have any tax questions, feel free to email them either today, now, before the show, and then we can forward them to the tax preparer. And then also tomorrow during the show, uh, you can email your questions at davidkgal.com. If you have a comment, if you have a suggestion, if you have a question about your taxes, either 2012 or going forward, 2013 and beyond, as they're looking at uh, rewriting the tax law or hopefully simplifying it, but figuring out some way to make uh, the budget balance, which is a dream all of us have, then uh, include those conversations and those questions to my email address, davidkgal.com. Uh, John Gibson, Average Investment Guy, will be with us in the show tomorrow, and we also are working on getting some reaction to uh, the governor's uh, State of the State message, which should is probably uh, happening right now and getting about ready to conclude. Not monitoring it live right now, but... Uh, We'll have some reaction to that tomorrow here on Valley Talk. Looking forward to that. Today, it's about trails, and it's about BLT. And no, it's not a sandwich. It is Build Lebanon Trails. Rod Sell with us in the studio today. Rod, thank you for being with us. You're welcome. So as we look at 2013, as you look at your um, bullet point list that you want to get done in 2013, what's your biggest uh, goal for this year? Well, our biggest goal for this year um, is to get the planning done and hopefully get a trail on the ground for the that missing link connection across the, the north end of uh, the north of Lebanon, and we're it's going by a couple of names yet. We haven't officially named that project, but it's the fourth phase of a project called Mark's Lou Trail, and um, we've been very successful with the first three phases. The city actually paved a section that's just south of the hospital last year uh, in 2012. Uh, and that's our major project. The other thing that is going to happen, so um, it's not like it's uh, something that is iffy, is that if we are going to build uh, two extra trails, two new trails, on two of the peninsulas at Cheetah Lake, that's already funded. So regardless of our grant attempts to be able to get funding to pave some of those trails, we will be building the two, the two gravel trails at, at Cheetah Lake. So those are two areas of concern for you, or, or priority, I should say. Uh, Cheetah Lake and then North uh, Lebanon? Those are our two priorities. There's other priorities that fall in there, too, um, although um, these are our number number one and number two. Uh, we'd like to uh, help the city facilitate their plan to get a trail that goes from the medical campus to the Academy Park. 
uh, Academy Park just happens to be where the, where now the uh, the medical library is at the uh, along with the city library. So uh, um, major connection there, um, and uh, from one beautiful park, uh, Academy Park, to uh, the medical campus, which is is going to be a beautiful park and setting in the future. Why North Lebanon such a priority? Is it because of the medical campus, because of existing trails? Why has that risen to the top of your priority list? Well, our, our priorities really are about connecting, uh, making connections that are solid through trails. Um, in the past, we've had to piece, uh, we go with a little piece of trail here and a little piece of trail there, depending on uh, what was the easiest to get developed. As usually that meant that there was some property ownership that allowed that. Uh, and on the north end of town, because of uh, commercial developments that have happened, uh, the Reeves Parkway has a trail uh, now, a paved trail that already exists, and then Hansard Avenue has a 12-foot wide sidewalk that, that was built because of development. Uh, and we've been working on uh, on the east side with the Mark Slew Trail Phase 1, 2, and 3. So the reason that's a high priority is because there's one missing link, and we're going to have a trail connection, a 17,000-foot-long trail with that one with just one more trail project. Mentioned earlier in the show, the Lebanon Strategic Trails Plan. Was this uh, uh, document created by the city? Was it created by BLT? That was a, the Lebanon Trail Strategic Plan. Uh, there was an intern from the University of Oregon that was hired and built Lebanon Trails. Actually raised uh, uh, much of those funds. The city also helped to be able to get an intern uh, a few years ago. Uh, and he worked for two years developing this plan, and uh, we took it to city council, and city council adopted the plan, and now it's a, it's a standing uh, attachment to the park's master plan. Does that drive pretty much your location of the proposed plan or proposed uh, trails? It does. It um, so with uh, doing the research and and uh, having the documentation of, of why they need to go in certain places, and then presenting it to the uh, to the city council and the city council adopting that document, then that now that document is used in the planning stages when when a developer uh, wants to come in and develop a residential site, for instance, uh, up on uh, Ridgeway Butte, um, they need to accommodate and make negotiations with the city to try to accommodate that plan as well as possible. Uh, to include trails, and they've done that on that uh, on that development. So the strategic trails plan, the the phrase has often been bandied about about a working document. In other words, it can be changed, added to. Let's say, for example, uh, Ridgeway Trail Butte, which is probably already on the strategic trails plan. But let's say a developer comes in and they have plans for a, a big development somewhere, and they want to include your trails into there. Are you open to? Amending the plan or adding segments of trails? Oh, you bet. And that's that's really the uh, the city uh, engineering department and planning department that works with those developers. But uh, one thing about a trails plan or any master plan, especially when you're talking about a parks master plan, you try to predict the future. And that's pretty tough to do. So you have to have that flexibility uh, to be able to, to actually w to get something built on the ground isn't always going to be exactly like it is on your plan. Let's talk about Ridgeway Butte. Beautiful view from up there. I, to be honest, I haven't been up there yet. I've driven by there. Uh, that's uh, also on your plan. Obviously, you're going to have a trail to the top where they have a scenic view up there. What's going on Ridgeway? Ridgeway Butte right now is uh, it, they were they were doing really well, uh, and then the economy uh, kind of tanked for them, and so they're they're um, holding back with their development and until the demand for those properties goes back up again. But the plans they submitted include several miles where the hard surface trails to the top of the butte and then uh, several miles where the soft surface trails that come down the butte and in, uh, included in that there's three lakes down at the river on the east side of the river and uh, there's trails that, that are proposed to go through that uh, property too. So as we think about the vision of Build Lebanon Trails to build 50 miles of trails in and around the city of Lebanon, crisscrossing, uh, encircling the city eventually, and crisscrossing through the city. Yeah. As I look at the hash mark, that's the red hash marked map, are, do all of these lines together add up to 50 miles? Is that where we get the figure? Yeah, they do, yes. And you add in all of those, and the, the sidewalks that are the interconnecting ones, those are in that figure also. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when I talk about the 26,000 feet that are developed, there's more than that if you include the sidewalks, but um, we, we don't include those in, in the, when we talk about the trails that have been developed. So this, uh, this proposed map, this isn't just phase one. This is a vision. This is the overall complete vision as it stands today. That is, yep. Okay. What's your biggest challenge? You know, we've been so... Um, we kind of... I talked about this a little bit before, but... Right. We've been rewarded 
with having a, a huge of, amount of public support. So, uh, you know, those challenges that, that other people seem to, to struggle with, um, we're not really having them. We have, uh, when we go out and, and ask for, for people to, to help us and give us ideas, they just say yes. Uh, one example that I like to, to use is we have these business cards that have our hike uh, schedules on them, and it has a whole schedule of 2013. Right. We've been handing those out for three years, and I've never had anyone not want to take one from me. So it just shows the level of public support that we have. And um, so, you know, you think the challenge was to get people involved. Well, we, we've overcome that challenge. And uh, we're very thankful to have all the groups that support us. Hard to raise money right now? Well, you know, we're not having a big difficulty raising money. Uh, we we've, uh, haven't had our 50C3 status very long. So when a couple of years ago, when you were talking about raising money, if we had two or $3,000, you know, we were going, well, what do we do with this? Well, now we actually have a structure. So we're just starting to get into that, that phase of raising funds. So for us, it isn't, we don't look at it to say, well, is it difficult to raise them? Because we're just starting, and now it's just a, it's an open window for us. If there's money that's available out there um, and we get it, then you know, we're, we're going up the hill. We're not going down the hill. Okay. Rod Sell, Build Lebanon Trails. We'll be more we're back with more on Valley Talk here in just a moment. Don't forget to sign up for Quiznos Taste on us. Dave at KGAL.com is the email address you can send to. Or call the station at 926-KGAL or 451-KGAL. And we'll put your name into the drawing for Quiznos Taste on Us. That's the uh, Quiznos located in Albany next to Novak's Restaurant and next to the former G.I. Joe Sporting Goods location. I'm Dave Adams with Rod Sell of BLT. And we'll be back with more of the show in just a moment. For too long, we've spent our weekends searching for the right tool when we should have been using the right tool. It's time to go to Ace. We'll find Craftsman Tools the second we walk in. We can fix that wobbly table and still have time for televised sports. Get your weekend back. Ace is the place for Craftsman Tools. And Economy Supply is your Ace place in the Mid-Valley to get them. Economy Supply Building and Contractor Center, where Highway 34 becomes Tangent Street in Lebanon. Ace, the helpful place. This is Charles Osgood. Most people who run a small business will tell you that there are limits to what any one person can get done in a single day. After all that buying, selling, handshaking, even the best multitaskers start to feel overwhelmed at times. But remember, you're not alone. The UPS store in your neighborhood is ready to help. With professional printing services like brochures, flyers, and business cards, your hard work will be represented the way you intended. Their mailbox solutions save time and make life easier. With a real street address, email or text notifications when mail and packages arrive, and package acceptance from any carrier. Also, their custom packing and shipping solutions give you confidence that your shipment's been packed with the know-how of a certified packing expert. With all these great services in one convenient location, you'll find that multitasking is as easy as visiting your local UPS store. And don't forget their open Martin Luther King Jr. Day for all your printing and shipping needs. Find a location near you. Visit the upsstore.com. The UPS Store franchise locations are independently owned and operated. Services, pricing, and hours of operation may vary by location. See Center for details. Banking these days can be pretty impersonal. You've got your big banks, your internet banks, your do-it-yourself banks, and your too-big-to-fail banks. That's why you might be interested in an alternative. Willamette well, Community Bank. Hello, this is Bill Higby, residential lender. You deserve better service without sacrificing a thing. So if you're feeling underserved, make the switch to the best banking option out there with branches in Albany and Lebanon. Willamette Community Bank. Service like no other. We promise. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. When you buy something at St. Vincent de Paul, you always save money. And when you donate something at St. Vincent de Paul, you save money too, because everything you donate is tax deductible. So save when you buy and save when you give at St. Vincent de Paul, where you can have some fun, save some money, and do something nice for your neighbors. We're St. Vincent de Paul, and we're located 2220 Southeast Pacific Boulevard in Albany, right next to Big Five Sporting Goods. Take the first step. You know you can go at least that far and quickly discover the next step is within your reach. And the next step, join the Y for free now through January 15th. It only takes one small change to make a difference. It takes 21 days to create a habit, so start today. No joining fee now through January 15th at the mid YMCA, 3311 Pacific Boulevard, Southwest in Albany. Call now, 541-926-4488. 541-926-4488. Online at ymcaalbany.org. The car. 
Car Show, Saturday afternoons on News Talk 1580, KGAL. Talking to Ron Sell, Build, Levitt, and Trails. This is Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. Glad to be with you on the program today. Don't forget, tomorrow, H&R Block, uh, H&R Block Tax Time. And we will have the same tax preparer we had on the last program with us once again. We're talking about uh, what you need to be aware of filing for 2012 and also looking at the 2013. What do they see coming on the horizon? We're going to be talking about health care, how that fits into the big picture from a tax standpoint. Interesting conversation. Looking forward to having that with you tomorrow. Our average investment guy, John Gibson, in the studio. Then we're also going to be having some reaction to the governor's state of the state message, Oregon legislature in session today. So... What's going on? What are the priorities? Uh, what do both political parties want to see going forward? Is it going to be PERS reform? You know, just what's on the what's on the talking block, so to speak, or what's on the tax cutting block, or or whatever. So we'll be talking about that tomorrow. Looking forward to that conversation today for the next five minutes. BLT Build Love It and Trails. Rod Sell and Rod, you tell me that you're one of the questions that I just had mm-hmm. as as we were sitting here talking during the break was we were talking about the city of Albany and their Talking Water Project. They're very proud of that uh, in some ways. um, Great project. Groundbreaking, how to treat, how to combine two things, uh, treating sewage, wastewater, make it palatable to public, and also have uh, a place for people to go and enjoy the outdoors and at the same time cool the water before they put it in the river. Kind of a win-win project. Do you ever envision the day when that project will kind of marry with BLT? Or are you guys so far geographically apart, uh, physically, you know, so many miles between you, is there ever a time for those to meet? There's a lot of current efforts that are going on right now, uh, regionally and and statewide, to tie everything together. And uh, Benton County right now has a project going on uh, that is going to provide a, a, a website where you can go and you won't see borders where, where they cross a, um, a line of, that goes from city to county. You'll see a trail system that goes through. So, um, yes, I do see that happening uh, all over Oregon. Oregon, I think, is actually leading the pack with trying to get a, a trail system uh, that's completely tied together across the whole state. One of the challenges in doing that is getting, not mentioning names, but getting municipalities and, and um governmental jurisdiction organizations to work together. Uh, Are we seeing more of those boundaries tend to become blended into an overall view or is still a lot of territorial fighting going on? You know, I see efforts to bring that all together. In fact, the current solutions team that's working on, on the community forest up above Sweet Home, they just had a meeting, and there was there were all kinds of agencies that were sitting at that table working together to, to, to uh, solve the, the problems. So I'm seeing a lot of progress there. Some of it's motivated because the economics are that if you work together, you're going to save funds, and everyone needs to save money now. Or you're more attractive to somebody that's a grant funding. If you can demonstrate to a grant, um, somebody who's judging from a grant awarding standpoint, if they can see, can see consensus between different governmental organizations, that brings more horsepower to the table, oh, more leverage for a project. It, it does, yeah. Okay. So as we have a few final minutes left in the show, as people are thinking about Build, Levin and Trails, what, what do you want them to think about first thing? Well, I want them to remember that we have uh, that we have uh, hikes and events the second Saturday of every month, and that we're actually uh, we we partner with uh, other communities. We're going to Sweet Home. Uh, and join the Sweet Home Community Trails Group on March 9th. Uh, April 13th, we're partnering with Le- with Lynn County Parks, uh, going to Roaring River, and uh, and another time, August 10th, with McDowell Creek. We're with Lynn County Parks. We're going to McDowell Creek Falls. What's the next event you've got coming up? Next event is February 9th. is our Trail Development Day, and we're going to be working on that, on our new number one priority to make that connection, uh, the missing link that goes with, that uh, to ties the medical campus in with the South San Juan River. Can people just show up for the Saturday, February 9th event from 9 to noon? Show up at 10 o'clock, and we're going to meet uh, at the South Hospital parking lot right there by LBCC 11 and campus. What do they need to bring with them? Bring your work shoes and uh, your your gloves and your desire to have fun. All right. Rod, uh, keep in touch. I uh, love what's going on. Uh, beautiful community in Lebanon, beautiful park system. Love what's going on in the partnership between you and Sheeta Lake and, and many other organizations. So keep up the good work and keep in touch. Will do. Thanks for your support. What's your website? Uh, BillLevinTrails.com. You also find us on Facebook.
Okay, you'll find us on Facebook, too, kgal.com. I'm Dave Adams. Uh, MP3 of the show will be available at kgal.com this afternoon. If you missed the show and want to listen to it again, please do so. And also join us tomorrow when the show will continue. Taxes, uh, reaction to the governor's speech, and more on Valley Talk. Locally owned and operated, this is the very independent News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.